Hey guys, how's it going? I'm trying to see if I can see Melanie here, but let's see, let's see, let's see. Melanie's an Eddie. Here we go. Hey, Dorita, how's it going? Oh, hey. hey! Yes! Finally. Oh gosh, yeah. I'm so bad at this. I'm sorry, guys. It's just. I'm not great at technology. How's it going? Good. So nice to see your face. Look at you. Looking good, huh? You it's too. Good, it's, good to be, it's good to be on vacation for so long. Melanie Zanetti. All right. Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> Where are you right now? In LA? I'm in LA. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's been four months now, six, five months. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Since June, I said. Yeah, since June. It's been... No, no, no. We were there in... I was got to... Oh, yeah. LA since June. Correct. Yeah, because we finished the second, uh, more or less. We were in Belize the second. June. First week of June. I miss Belize. So great to Life see you. so gorgeous. The, yeah, the stuff good. in the film is going beautiful. I miss you, not Belize. <laughs> right, okay. So, as right, it goes, hi guys, hi everybody. It's 5,000 people. Wow, it's a lot. Anyway, Hello, thanks for so joining. Ali called me uh, literally like 25, 30 minutes ago saying, Oh, I know you're going to do a live with Melanie. Please don't spoil anything about the movie. The movie's great, blah, blah, blah. And I said, Okay. Well, I didn't but get a call because she knows that. You won't say anything, but she knows me, so of course I'm going to say something. And I can tell, <laughs> I can tell you guys that it's going to be released in November. Oh. And uh, apparently they're deciding a date, which is going to be more or less by the end of November, mid end of November. So that's that's what they're thinking. And um, what? No, what you no, nothing. I'm just I'm just I'm being a normal person looking at you. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's that's the thing. I'm, I just came back from work. I'm pretty fucking exhausted today. Uh, as you know, I'm working at my clinic a lot right now. We just opened another clinic in Rome, so it's been a bit of a, um, a rough time. But I'm very happy because it's going good. And I can finally... I, st I stopped to take my, my medicine for, for fibromyalgia, which uh, um, allowed me, allows me finally to lose some weight and basically lose, lose all the puffiness that I had before. So these are, guys, the medicine I was taking for fibromyalgia, which is a bit much. But... Crazy. How are you feeling? Are you feeling better? Yeah, way better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pain is gone and... Uh, yeah, yeah, way better, way better, way better. I'm very happy about it, and uh, yeah, everything is good. I'm um, I'm working on many different things. I also develop my personal um, uh, like um, sort of a line for things about beauties and stuff like that. Basically, those are like proper, you know, like creams and things that are very good. Um, yeah, so I'm working right now on a logo. This was just to try Dr. G, but it's just too, it sounds a bit too uh, cheeky. I don't like it. <laughs> People will expect well. actually like turn and start vibrating or something, but that's actually, <laughs> actually <it>. so, <laughs> but anyway, um, so guys, if you have any questions, it would be very nice to answer those questions because I know that Melanie has, um, has basically um, like a, probably a full, uh, like you gotta do something for work, right? Right, like a Skype call. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I don't think I can talk about it yet, but I, I'm prepping for a film that I'm doing okay. in Europe, and um, yeah, keeping busy. So, that's that's very good, Melanie. We're very happy for you. A <laughs> uh, little less happy for me because I'm not shooting anything right now, but we're still happy for you. 
When is your, your the film you shot in Poland coming out? When can we see that? Um, apparently, it's going to be in November. That's what they said. Um, but of course, um, um, more or less, it's going to be in November. So we'll see. Great. The, I, don't know, I, don't, I honestly don't know exactly the date, but they said it's November. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. And apparently, they're working even on, a, on an idea of of letting us come to uh, probably LA to do maybe uh, like a premiere for uh, Gabriel's and uh, Gabriel Rapture, uh, but I don't know if it's gonna be possible because of um, because of course of COVID. Because I I I, I don't know if you I mean yes you definitely have seen the news, but apparently it's spiking up again a lot. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Spoil we shall. Goodbye. Uh, I'm just looking at um, trying to grab some questions. Okay. Uh, said, Jake, you a bit hot. You uh, both uh, hinted uh, at a project you were working together. Anything, anything more on that? Uh, we couldn't do it because, of course, uh, COVID. Uh, um, change everything and, and it's really thrown a spanner in the works so um everything's been put on the back burner we'll see if we can we can do things in the future it's the it's as we all know the world's world's really changed so it's uh recalibrating and um yeah working out what's possible and just for um, your information even though we don't do many lives together because apparently we're both working very hard and summer was in between and blah, blah, blah. We still talk a lot. We, we have a very good, because I don't know if you've seen that, but sometimes like there are some people who want to spread a lot of negativity about, um, in general maybe, and uh, apparently they said that we had an argue uh, or we just don't talk to each other very much. Can you <laughs> very It's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> totally not true. Uh, we we adore each when other. Was the um, it was probably three days ago, two days ago. What was that? Sorry. When was the last time I called you? It was probably like three days ago. Yeah. Like I think four so. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you called me yesterday, but I couldn't. I could answer you. I'm sorry, I was busy. But I mean, <laughs> you could, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, so funny. Well, you look very okay. good. I can see you're having a good time. You look very good. Thanks. You too. How's everything in Italy? How's the summer? How's your Italian summer going? Well, summer is good. I didn't do much, uh, even though um, I didn't do much, even though I, I post some stories on on Instagram. But I literally did like five days of vacation but not even close to each other so i was doing like one day here then a week back in rome because i was working in the clinic then another day then another week then another day then another week so it doesn't really feel like i had a holiday but it's better than anything than nothing of course and i'm not complaining but uh, i'm really feeling right now that i that i would love to take like a week for real somewhere uh -huh. and just like relax because we were so stressed because we got to open this clinic. Um, we were supposed to open this clinic um, uh, on Monday, and they finished to work on Sunday. They oh, finished no. It was like a rush, a very big rush against time, but we made it, and so I'm very happy about it, but it was pretty challenging. And, and of course, I was the one who was there all the time, you know, controlling, uh -huh. you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> and trying to be you know very present and blah 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 but okay, any all right i'm gonna look look at some of these questions someone just said who plays the most yeah. jokes on set 100 percent, julio um when he was working with the guy who plays um the lawyer um is it uh mr <laughs> green um what were you doing you were like putting forks in his pocket and he was like what are yeah you know yeah, random objects. Because I love the idea of someone coming back home and empty his pockets and find like very weird objects. Like, why do I have a spoon in my pocket? I don't know. It's just me being me. Um, so, so yes, definitely, Julio. 
Um, but, but at the end of the day, at the end of the shooting period, it was like it was very uh, um, aware when I was around that uh, uh, something was not, you know, going on. Yeah, with this. he was wary of you. He was like, okay, what's going to happen now? <laughs> I love John Greeny. I love him. He's wonderful. He's the um, best. Okay, what else have we got? Julia, you have the most beautiful ocean eyes. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, we had this question before. When does Girls to Buy release? With Julia said maybe around November. Yeah. Apparently, it's going to be more or less around mid October, November, end of November. I don't know yet. They're still deciding a date. It's not official, but ideally, ideally, it's going to be around November. And I'm very actually. Uh, I'm curious about it because I've seen the movie, but of course uh, I want people to see it and let me know what they think about it because I'm playing such a different character. I'm playing this um, Arabic guy with an Arabic accent. So it's it's been challenging and I love it very much, that experience. So we'll see. They're trying to catch some of these questions. Someone said, how was shooting the wedding? Cold. It was really, <laughs> really cold. In the we Basilica, were... it was... Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, how was your experience of shooting the wedding? It was very cold. Like, literally very cold. And actually, we were in two different places because, uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, we couldn't fly uh, uh, out in Italy people that were supposed to be in the wedding. So we had to basically shoot uh, from the point of view of the people in Italy and then reverse and shoot in America. So, and but when we were shooting in Italy, it was probably March, February, March, yeah, end of February, March, first week of March, and we were in this beautiful chapel. But it was one of those very old chapel, I would say, with no heating system, and I was freezing to death. But again, nothing compared to when Melanie was supposed to be fully wet <clears throat> in winter time and I was supposed to be, you know, the first scene in Gibbers Inferno when they actually meet in the street and I was driving um, in my car and, um, and, and I'm asking, uh, where do you live? And, and you'll catch pneumonia. That was the next level. That was freezing. I recently, um, I did a short crazy. film out on Catalina Island and it was so, it was, the water was really cold and everyone else was in wetsuits and I had this like 1950s bathing suit on and everyone's like, oh my God, you must be so cold. I'm like, no, nah, it's nothing. This is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> Listen, I was so impressed with you. Like, seriously, honestly, I was so impressed because she's been with, with um, she's been fully wet in winter time in Syracuse when it was like probably below zero for literally 12 hours, which is insane. Trust me, guys, it's just fucking crazy because you, you, you get sick and uh, she did get sick and she... She actually oh, I didn't get sick then, though. They really looked after me then. It was yeah. it was later, and I may have passed it on. So I know that was before Christmas, actually, but but we were sick right after. Yeah. Um, okay. Question is: yeah. What point do you decide to ever stop being actors? I don't know if that's ever going to be a thing for me. I think um, there's so many ways that you can keep evolving as an actor. I think. Do, will there be other things I get involved in that is uh, also creative, but not just acting? Sure. But I don't know. I'd love to keep acting until I die. I'd love to be one of those people who are like, you know, in their 90s and playing some like old matriarch, stirring up shit. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Well, I, I would say um, I, I don't think I will ever stop acting, but I will definitely um, start to work as I'm doing right now on other stuff too, because I, I feel that I need um, in between movies uh, a little bit more stability, uh, especially I, I like to, um, like I really need something that I'm passionate about it that is just not acting because of course, Acting is something that I love, but it's very different from what most of the people from, from from what most of the people think. It's very like a roller coaster. You wait a lot, you hope a lot, you have to deal with a lot of frustration. So it's 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 tough. 
Probably being on set is the best part of acting, but, but the tough part is waiting. And I'm not a guy that can wait uh, for like weeks, months, uh, years sometimes uh, very easily. You know, I, I, I need to be busy. I need, and I have so many passions that I want to, you know, I, honestly, the thing is this. So let's be very realistic, okay? I do believe that the, the time that we have on this earth is limited. And I want to use as much time as I can to do what the fuck I love. I don't want to do things that I don't like. And waiting is one of them. That's the point. So I get that. Totally. Um, okay, so I'm trying to jump to some more questions. Um, uh, right, what was one before? Um, oh, someone asked for our, our favorite scene in Rapture. It's so hard, guys, because we, we filmed it in parts and, like, part of it, like, a year ahead. So even getting my head around what my favorite parts were. Um, look, I loved the stuff filming in Italy. Just it was so beautiful just being there and you get it so affected by, you know, how beautiful everything is. And, you know, that, that was wonderful. And also, like, Belize, guys, so good. So amazing. So, so Hi, Turkey. I bet you know what it was. I don't know what What's that, that in relation to? <laughs> miss the miss the contacts, Ali. Um, someone says, "When when are you going to come to Spain?" Uh, maybe when pandemic has died down. Who Spain is on my list. It's like right up of my my bucket list of places to go. Somebody else is asking for promise. I think we're going to shoot promise in February again if if COVID doesn't get worse. But that's oh the no idea. no that's not promise. That's that's redemption. We're shooting. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, it, it'll be. Um, I think we're talking maybe That's March, right. April, or uh, May, June. There's just a few things, you know, in the works. Okay, yeah, sorry, guys. I don't want to offend anyone, but <laughs> I still struggle sometimes with redemption and rapture, rapture and all that stuff. It's not my language. Anyway, um, yeah, Promise is going to be probably shooted straight after, maybe the next February. Again. Yes. Yes. We'll see. That's um, it. Okay. Uh, Julia, when you played drunk in Gabriel's Inferno, uh, where were you afraid you might actually fall over? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, but she was very. She was great because she was holding me. Like she's very strong. She's very yeah, strong. Well, I'm strong. Holy also, God. like low center of gravity because I'm short. She was good. I, so I could play in a very casual and I think natural way. I was very much, you know, trying to be into the mood of it, but really drunk. And she, she, I was afraid that I was, I was going to fall, fall on it on her, but she. Uh, did I got you. I got you. She's a tough girl. <laughs> um, and she loves okay. to be. You know, Gabriel's girl. fans are the best. Just saying. Someone wrote it. I agree. Um, oh, how tall are we? I'm I'm five one. I'm pushing five two, but that's kind of where I sit. How tall are you? You'll sit uh, something. Five three. Five three. Yes. So we're almost. But I'm someone who I um I feel like I'm a taller person than I am. And uh, Julia and I in Atlanta we were at the gym together, and I was like, <laughs> "What? You're a much bigger person than I am." <laughs> 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 my perception of how I have like sized as movie, I just think I'm like, I like I feel big inside. <laughs> um, but it was very funny. I was like, "Oh, you're 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 much bigger than I am." Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time that we actually saw each other reflected from a mirror, and she was like, "Yeah, you're way taller than I thought." I was like, "Yeah," because <laughs> of course, when we're shooting on set, they always put an apple box under yeah. Melanie. Is, um, just just a quarter apple. Just a, just, uh, just a touch. Twenty-five quarters apples. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, okay. When you come to Brazil, I really hope soon again we would love to come. Um, 
Um, because of COVID, we had to postpone it, but it was uh, in our plan to come and present the movie there. Very good at playing drunk. Thank you very much. I was actually very drunk. No, I'm kidding. Um, um, will there be promise after this, redemption? This, we don't know yet. This, Who knows? This is a very serious question, okay? Uh, very interesting, actually. Melanie, how can you work with Julio? He's very handsome. Very um, how can I, interesting. Well, it's, a, it's, it's very tough, um, but I survive, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, he's a very handsome man. Um, but also, you know, when you spend time with someone, people are just people. And someone be can become, um, I don't know, yeah. uh, more I thought, I thought it, I attractive thought it the more you know them. So I, I thought you, you were just neutral. No, I'm joking. Um, I thought you were funny. And then I started to spend time with you and you were just a girl. Not this funny. is the thing. People are... <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of relation that we always had on set like i generally think that what really makes us special in the working environment is that we play with each other a lot so we try to keep everything very light uh very joyful and and we have a very similar uh, way of laughing with each other. So I like to poke her, she loves to poke me back, and that's basically how we do. And it's the only way to survive when you have to do so many, so many scenes, and so many. So many scenes that are very dialogue heavy. You kind of just have to be able to keep it light and keep Bye. it fun and play. Yeah, um, but working with, Melanie, working with Melanie is literally great. Like, I really, really hope Melanie, and I'm going to say this in front of everybody, but I already told you so many times that we're going to have a chance to work together. Uh, not, on, not on just, not on this project, not on just this project, but also on some other stuff. Because we totally. really have a great way to work together. We, have we very really work, like, in a quite a similar way. We're both, like, super dedicated and... Um, intellectually we're a match in terms of how we approach the script and things like that so that's all really helpful with well, when you're working with someone okay i'm reading um uh how can you do those steamy scenes naturally we're both great actors and professional that's how you do it naturally um <laughs> uh what else do we got I'm trying to think what okay if you, you have a question and we didn't catch it feel free to write it again um, you guys would be I'll great be, in a comedy. We would be great in a comedy. A comedy with be, guns. We always said that. Um, how did you tune out the crew during intimate scenes? Well, that's on you, Melody. Um, I think you just have to really focus on the reality of the world you're in and the story. Because this is the truth with all filming. You have multiple people around you. And so your job is to, it's less about tuning them out. It's more about focusing on what does my character want in this scene um, and connecting with the other actor there. You know, that's, you know, trying to yeah. stay present. Yeah. The more you're present, the less you're worried about the people around you. And of course, it's, it's tough because, um, you know, especially I would say in the first part of the of the movie in Inferno, we barely knew each other, so it was kind of weird saying, hey, hi, I'm, I'm Julio, nice to meet you, I'm playing Gabriel, and uh, okay, we gotta kiss each other right now because this is the scene and we just met. Yeah, you just, you but, have to just dive in. But it's, it's exactly what acting is all about, it's about substitutions, it's about subtext, it's about being professional, which means that you do it as the character. You don't do it as yourself. Uh -huh. And also, I think um, we really very quickly developed a lot of trust. And when you feel like you're safe with the other actor, yeah. then you can be free and um, don't and not feel inhibited. Um, and that's you know super important. And it's not it's not always the case. You don't feel as safe with. That's the, the hope, but it's not always the case. Um, have you accomplished your New Year's resolutions? Did you have a New Year's resolution? What does it mean? 
um, something you wanted to achieve in the new year or change? Well, oh gosh, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> it's a big question. It's a big question. For me, it's a big question. Well, I, I started with my clinic. I'm going to start medicine super soon. So I would say, yeah, a lot of stuff. Of course, not enough. Uh, we me, always it's a work in progress. Yeah, we always need to. It's like a bicycle, you know. You need to pedal, otherwise you're going to fall. So there's always something. And for now, I, I would say I'm pretty, pretty happy about what I'm, what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, question, is there going to be a premiere? Um, that's a little up in the air because of COVID stuff. Um, but there will be a premiere for, I think that the hope is there will be. And if it can't be for this part, it will be for another part. So um, stay tuned. Uh, which other characters from the films would you both choose to play? Ooh. If you got to choose another character from the films to play, who would you play? Um... I'm probably not age appropriate at the moment, um, but I would play, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. I'm totally blanking. Um, she played my professor. What is my brain doing? Um, she's fabulous and a fabulous character and she's um, supposed to be a oh, little pocket it. rocket too. Catherine Picton! Yes! I can't believe my brain was doing that. I would play Catherine Picton. Who would you play? Uh, I would play Catherine Picton too. I would be... <laughs> I have to fight you for Catherine I, Picton. I, I don't know. I'm gonna, I don't know. Honestly, uh, probably the lawyer. Yeah. I, like, I like to be Can hard. Can you imagine? They'd be like, oh... Well, we're getting weird vibe. Like, why am I attracted to this random lawyer character? I don't think it would work well, very well. <laughs> when, I, when I heard the question at first, I thought that they mean like any other character. So I was like, oh, I'm going to play Rocky. Rocky's the best. I'm going to say Rocky. <laughs> we broke the, I, I was looking at the question and it was like, oh, but Rocky is not in this movie. So I, I got to find another. <laughs> but anyway, Rocky is my favorite character ever. But. I would say that in this movie, uh, like to be honest, there's not so much that we can play out of our character because I'm so into it. I'm so stuck into Gabriel's uh, like uh, psychology that that I don't know. I think Tosca also has done a great job choosing us because because we really bonded with the character very much. So I, I, yeah, no one else that I want to play in the movie besides, of course, Catherine Picton because I would be. <laughs> Be a great Picton. Um, all right. Any other questions? Uh, what are the three criteria that help you choose a script? Um, I wouldn't say I have three criteria. There's so many things that go into choosing a script. Um, who's working on the project as well? Uh, how you feel about the story, the writing, um, where it's going to be shooting, if you have time during that period. Um, that there's so many things to go that go into whether you choose to do a project. Is it something you haven't done before? Like I really love sinking my teeth into things that I have uh, never tried before. I love doing a really diverse range of things. Um, you'll see, I like I do a kids' cartoon. Um, I have played I so many different types of things. <laughs> I would love to have that opportunity to. I, I'm really looking for something like that, like out of out of my comfort zone. I would love to play the game. I would love to play. Uh, I don't know anything that is just not what I look like or you know what people expect from me. That's the best part of acting when you can actually explore part of yourself that you don't know but they are there. Uh -huh. uh, I, think, uh -huh. I, think, I would say, at least for me, but I'm pretty sure you agree with me, uh, so please do, um, <laughs> that it's, um, it's basically a journey, you know, that we do in ourselves and we discover things that, you know, are very interesting and, and we're like, oh, wow, that's me, that's, that. oh, wow, things that you don't, you're not conscious about it, but 
they're there. I mean, it's very interesting. That's why I would say that theater would be a great tool in, in school, you know, because can can help kids to, to start to understand themselves a lot. Because how, how do you know yourself? You know yourself when you relate to experience in life and the way you react to those experiences to tell you how you are. You start to have an idea of you, who you are and the way you react to things. But the great thing about acting is that we can recreate those, let's say, situations or experiences, but in a much safer way. But if you still believe, so if, if you really push yourself into the acting, because when you act, you got to really be there, be in that moment, you react in the same way you would react in a real situation, but it's actually safe and it's safer. So I would say it's very, it would be very good to have two, three hours of theater every week in, in school, especially in kindergarten or, you know, when kids are small, because, because it gives you the tool to really uh, understand a lot about yourself and so, you know, um, deal with life a lot better. Life is unexpected most of the time, so we're not fully prepared. Uh, anyone is so you know someone just wrote a great question um what have you guys learned from this global situation that the only thing that matter is the people you love yeah yeah it really um brings home for me that um uh life is unpredictable and um everything can change or be lost in a second. So um, how you show up every day and tell the people that you love that you love them um, because you never know what's going to happen. And I think for a lot of people, this pandemic um, has really um, made people reassess their, their priorities in life and what's really important to them. So yeah, another person wrote before um, how, what's your favorite genre of film or TV to watch? Uh, you want an answer first? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite genre. I, I'll, I can tell you some things that I've seen recently that I loved. Um, yeah. I just watched The Mayor of Easttown that Kate Winslet's in, who is just transformational in it. She's so brilliant. Um, I watched Physical with Rose Byrne and once again, saw her do work that I've never seen her do, and she's just phenomenal in it. Um, and I saw, watched The Morning Show. I don't know if you've seen that. It's on Apple TV with um, Reese Witherspoon and um, Jennifer Aniston, and uh, you, you loved choose, it. Uh, the writing is so I, good, and Billy Crudup, oh, he's so good in it. But if you can choose him. a genre, what was that? Sorry. If you can choose like a a type of movie, would uh -huh. you say more like thrillers or? I love. Look, I love. I love a um, magical realism thriller, and mm -hmm. I love something that has like. Uh, like always the core is it's about relationships. One of my favorite movies is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is just oh, so fabulous. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's brilliant. What about you? Um, I love thrillers a lot. I'm a guy, so that's something that we love a that lot. doesn't mean anything. Guys can like anything they want. Of course, but... Not their like gender or anything, and no gendered watching. Continue. <laughs> okay, <laughs> shuffle. <Okay. laughs> but I would say that normally um, I prefer thrillers and I like action movies a lot. But I love a lot when you have, uh, when you see the struggle of a character through difficulties, and then you know the fact that he can overcome those difficulties himself. I don't know. I'm always very touched by those kind of stories. But of course, I love comedies as well. I, I'm very, as, as, I, as you said, I, I think I love good products. So when you see something that is really, uh, you know, uh, unique and, 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 and authentic, it's just so good to watch. There can be anything. 
can be even, I don't know, uh, like a musical. Absolutely. Totally. I, and I, I want to be emotionally manipulated when I watch something. I want to feel things. I want to laugh. I want to cry. I want to watch something that is like the most incredible chase and filmed so brilliantly like holy wow how did they do that i want to be moved um so that can come in all genres yeah everything that basically touch us and uh, and again uh, i think it's good uh, each one of us has what has one movie that is literally that movie that touched us the most um so I have mine, you have yours. Which one is yours? Um, I don't know if I have one, but I did mention one before that I liked. Um, okay, quick, on to another question. Um, how did you guys um, manage your mental health during COVID? Um, I have started using an app called Balance. There's another one called Headspace that's really good. They're both meditation apps. I really recommend them. Um, I think they're both... Um, balance is free for a year at the moment um, and that's really helped me centering I, I do 10-15 minutes a day not a lot but I find um, guided meditation is really helpful especially when you're starting out um, and then just spending time with, with people that I love when I can and um, trying to stay connected with friends and um, I also do a gratitude list every day, just three things that I'm grateful for. And it just helps recenter. What about you? Is there anything that you do in particular? Wim Hof method all day long. Cold exposure and uh, lots of breathing. That's, that's, that's what I used at the time. That's what I used, right. That's what I'm using right now. Um, when I stopped doing it, I felt, I really felt the differences between before and after. So I started again, and um, yeah, I have my ice machine over there. You guys can see it. That's my ice machine. I bought it on Amazon for like 100 bucks, and I can make my eyes every day, and I can jump in the water, do my breathing first. I really suggest you guys to go and see and check it out. Wim Hof Method. It's so good. It can literally change your life. But I would say anything that is pleasant, anything that can help you to relax, um, this is very interesting, okay? We have, we have uh, uh, our, our nervous system, it's called the, let's say we have a lot, lots of nerves, but the, the, the most important one for mental health is the vagus. And it's, it's called the autonomous nervous system because we think, we thought that it's fully autonomous, that we cannot tap into it, which is, which is wrong, actually. We have the autonomous nervous system with the vagus nerve, and then we have two different nerves that is called two different systems that's called sympathetic and parasympathetic. And they they work one against the other. So one, let's say, let's let's make it very simple. One is the gas pedal, the other one is the brake. So the parasympathetic, it's the brake. The Wim Hof method helps you to really learn how to press that brake. Because when we feel stress, it's because we give too much gas. And it can be something that is out of our control, you know stressful situation, lots of work, I would say COVID, uh, uh, pandemic, uh, lockdown, lo whatever it is, you know, you have to be stuck in a place for days. Well, you can learn how to press that brake and to calm yourself down and, and feel relieved. It's very good. It's very, very good. I, I love it very much. Um, we talk yeah, Julio took me through some of the breathing and it's, it's really excellent. It's, um, it's really worth looking into for sure um someone oh, asked what kind of music do you like do you listen rap. to rap rap hip-hop um my my taste changes and moves with like what mood i'm in i'm i'm listening at the moment in prep for what i'm doing i'm listening to a lot of uh, nick cave and tom waits right now so if that, that gives you any oh. idea where i'm at um uh, like someone asked what was that sorry well, it sounds like the Joker from Heath Ledger. They, oh, they... yeah. Tom White, such a great voice. Um, someone asked what your rings mean, if you want to share. Someone asked whether your rings have a meaning. Oh, yeah, it's very simple. So this one is my name, GMB. Uh, somebody uh, gave it to me many, many years ago. 
And this one is actually my name, so it's G, but I found out that this is a Masonic ring. So somebody gave it to me because I thought, oh, there's a G, we're going to give it to G, but actually this is a Masonic ring. So everybody. Because I, I saw it, I was like, that, that's Masonic. And I usually like go somewhere in, in a place where, you know, these people are around, they're like, oh, he's one of us. No, no, man, I'm not one of yours. I'm, I'm just me. This is just G. It's just a ring, but I'm not Masonic at all. But now I have it because it's just something that I'm used to it. And also I have this one, which is another uh, bracelet that somebody gave it to me and I like it. Um, this is from someone me. asked, uh, <laughs> someone asked, what do we do in our free time? Oh, someone said, show me your nails. They're my nails. Uh, <laughs> what do you do in your free time? Well, I do uh, lots of things. I like to. I like to train. I like to. I mean, lately I didn't do that much, but I like to build my bikes, my my motorcycles. I like to read a little bit. I like to ride. I like to. Yeah, basically, I like to uh, do. I like to build things. I don't know why. I always love to move my hands. I love that. I love that. Um, I love being out of nature. I love hiking. Um, love reading, um, uh, writing when I, when I feel inspired. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. What else? We, oh, someone asked, um, what was it like having the fizzy to ourselves? Um, incredible. I had a moment where I was, I think everyone was on a break and I was in the room, uh, with a Botticelli. I was like, this is never, by myself, pretty much. And I was like, this is never, ever going to happen again. It was absolutely magic. And being able to be up that close with them and seeing, like, the grain of the paint stroke. Like, they're, they're such incredible works. And that place is so, oh, my God. It was, it was magic. It was magical. <laughs> um, anything else? What books would you recommend? Um, what books would I recommend? Oh, what did I read? Um, I read a book in the, this year called Educated, um, by this woman called, uh, Tara Westover. And she was in this hardcore Mormon family, I think it was. Yeah. And lived on this hill and it was this, like, pretty much no anti-doctors, no formal education, and it was her sort of story out of this. It is wild. She's such a good writer. Um, highly re recommend that. Another one I love is called um, Devil in the White City. And uh, both of these are nonfiction, but they sort of read like fiction. Um, so part of the story is about the building of um, this white city in Chicago during the Second World Fair. So it was where the Ferris wheel was first created and it's just this wild story, but at the same time, one of the first, it's a story about one of the first serial killers who was in this town and the stories kind of go at the same time. And it's fascinating. I, ha I had to kept, like, I kept going online and going, is this real? It's all real, crazy, recommends. Beautiful. Do you have a, a recommend or, or we, what else we got? Um, thank you, it is a great book to recommend. Um, We've had lots of requests for you to say something in Italian. In Italian? Yeah. Cosa volete che vi dica, ragazzi? There we go. Um, someone asked if you're ticklish. I'm not really ticklish. Are you ticklish? I can be. You're a little bit ticklish. I can be only here. <laughs> <laughs> no! Only on my neck. If I start thinking, I start to feel ticklish. Uh, anyway, um, uh, you were on my neck all the time. Um, alive or dead, who would you have drinks with? Oh, that's a hard one. What, what, what they ask you? Um, who, who would you want to have drinks with? They can be anyone, alive or dead. Interesting question. It's a big one. I don't know, guys. Dalai Lama. Ooh, good choice. 
Ricky, Still that's not. a really ah, that's a really good choice. I've been listening a lot to Esther Perel, who I think is brilliant, um, and uh, so it's not as exciting as the Dalai Lama because I think that's a better answer. But right now, Esther Perel, I'd love to chat with her. Um, Julio, how many tattoos have you got? Three. I'm gonna have probably five soon. Ooh. But, don't tell Tosca, she'll hate that. I know. <laughs> Straight after the movie. Oh, you're gonna get an email from Ali going, what? Not until the movie's done. Um, uh, Heath Ledger, oh, I love it. Um, which dessert is your favorite? Tiramisu. Oh, good one. Um, I love a good cheesecake. Anything that has a, like citrus, like a citrus curd, down. Um, uh, when is season three of Bluey coming? Um, I think it, for Australians, it's coming towards the end of this year. Um, but it, it'll be a little longer wait for the rest of the world. Um, uh, have I read Julio's book yet? No, because it's written in Italian. And this bitch can't read Italian. But as soon as it's translated to English, I will read it. Um, so bad. You're so Julio, mean. How is, how is the scene filming with Grace and Maya? Was, was good. Lots of emotions, lots of, like, lots of tears. You're going to love it, guys. It's going to be... Yeah, and they were both gorgeous actors, really wonderful. So it's going to be a beautiful scene. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Blue is my religion. Love that. Uh, oh, no, I don't. I quit <laughs> four years ago. Um, okay, here's a good question. When is Nutshell going to be um, translated to English? Um, I'm also waiting this question. <laughs> We're waiting for it. Um, it doesn't depend on me, guys. It depends, of course, on the editor. So we'll see. On a publisher, sorry. Um, so publisher or editor? I don't know. Um, uh, publisher and edit. Uh, publisher, probably publisher. Uh, from the company that, that, that owns the rights. That, that owns the right right now. That own the rights. Um, so I don't know. I honestly, I really hope soon because I, because lots of people are, um, are asking for it. But we'll see. You know, it doesn't really depend on me. So okay, hope soon. here's a controversial one: okay. pizza so, with or without with pineapple. pineapple. You guys are crazy. Pizza and pineapple. Oh God. Okay, so that's a no from Julio. I look. I feel agnostic about it. I like, I don't I, love it, but I don't think it's as bad as everyone makes it out to be. So I'm, you, I'm like, a, I don't love it, but I'm, I'm not going to throw shade because I don't think it's the worst ever. <laughs> Look at your face. You're like, no, we you don't can not, anymore. You cannot put the pineapple on the pizza. It's not good. It's impossible. People will die. <laughs> um, uh, I agree, no pineapple. Okay, it's fair, it's fair. It's, it's definitely not the best topping. Um, all right, we have a couple more minutes because you must be exhausted and I, I have things I have to go do. Um, you gotta go your Skype. Thank you so much, everyone who's okay. turned up Guys, and I'm stayed and- Let's say this, Melanie, let's do another live maybe soon. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it because I know that you gotta travel super soon, probably back to Australia. So maybe I would say in a couple of weeks, we can probably think about it. Let's talk and maybe we can have another, uh, another live, maybe with Tosca as well. Maybe we talk about the movie. Yeah, and, uh, we'll see. We'll see when, when, when all our schedules line up. Um, someone said, views on Taylor Swift, I think she's brilliant. Um, that's my view. Also, she has managed to make, she's such a good songwriter. She's managed to like, have this huge career with so many albums. I think her work just keeps maturing and getting better. And she's done it all in the public eye with horrific levels of scrutiny. Um, 
very pro Taylor Swift. Uh, okay, I think that's that's probably all we have time for. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really, really appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much. I'm gonna save the live and um, Mel, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you one of these days. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank Good you. luck with your call and uh, thank you again so, so much. Hope to see you super soon. Okay. Bye Ciao. everyone. Bye bye.